Hello everybody, my name is Sherry Steele and I'm a teaching and learning consultant here at Conestoga College. I want to welcome you to this short video that is really designed for new faculty coming to teach their first semester or maybe second semester at the college. We're developing these pathway videos to support you in getting key pieces of information and key ideas that will really work to get you on your feet supporting your students right away when you start teaching this semester. So I'm going to spend the next 10 minutes or so with you talking about how you can help your students to better understand the assignments related to your course or evaluations in your course. So what's really important to think about when we are looking at assessments is that this is how we uh, gauge success often for our students in our courses. So at the college, we look at outcomes and whether or not a student can demonstrate knowledge, skills, or attitudes that they've acquired throughout our courses. And how we do that is through assessment. And so, of course, we want them to have the best possible chance to be successful in these assessments as possible. And oftentimes, if a student doesn't fully understand an assignment, they aren't demonstrating to their full capability what it is that they know or the skills that they actually have, etc. And so we want to make sure that students have a really clear understanding of our expectations related to assignments that they understand any type of process or timeline with respect to going from introduction of the assignment to the due date itself. And of course, it's really important that our students understand how they're going to be assessed or how they are being evaluated on the assignment itself. And if we can do all of those things together, our students stand a much greater chance at showing us the best that they have and of course that translates into stronger grades and greater success for them as well. Something we can't forget about that I'm not going to spend a lot of time on, but it is an important thing to note is the idea of academic integrity. We need to make sure that our students are completing their assignments, doing their assessments with strong integrity. And so we need to create a culture and a conversation in our classrooms related to academic integrity that relates not only to what we're doing in our courses and assessments, but what translates into the profession in which we are helping them and supporting them to enter. And so having conversations and creating awareness in our courses goes a long way. I think it's really, really important to provide specific examples with your students to what constitutes an academic offense with a particular assignment. Um, give them those tangible, real examples for your course and your assignments. Um, and that would be really, really impactful for them. It's often more meaningful than more generalized ideas that they will get from things like Conestoga 101 but making it real in your class, relating it to the vocation, and having an ongoing conversation will go a long way in preventing academic offenses and supporting our students to do their assessments with greater integrity. Okay, let's take a step back and think about an assignment that we have that is due in week six. How are we gonna support our students to really understand and do their best with that assignment? One of the first things I think is important to consider is the notion of how much that assignment is weighted to their overall grade. A lot of times students don't have a full understanding of what does 20% actually mean. And so spending some time talking about the real numbers with them, you know, if you don't do this assignment, you cannot get above 80% if you get perfect on everything else. There's a heavy weight to that and, and the pass fail nature of 20% uh, is significant. So make sure you have that conversation and there's awareness of the value or the weight of, of each assessment. Now we're going to backtrack. So let's say we're in a regular semester where week six is the deadline. When are we going to start talking about this particular assessment? Well, week one of the semester is often overwhelming for students and for faculty too. And so um, we give them a ton of information. We talk about the overall assessment or evaluation plan 
for the course that's on the course outline and often we use the instructional plan to also engage the students with understanding but to go into the specifics about a particular assignment in week one would be a lot so this is a pretty big assignment so we're going to do it in week two so it's going to be the time to introduce the assessment um, how you do this is really going to matter about the modality of the course that you're teaching so if you're teaching an asynchronous course, you might go about things a little bit differently than if you're teaching an in-person course um, or a hybrid course, for example. I do think it's really helpful to have Word documents and videos and web pages associated with the assessment that are living in Econestoga that you can refer to in any of those modalities. So to be specific, what kinds of things are you going to include in this introduction? Well, you absolutely want to spend some time reviewing the expectations that you have of the students. And that can be very, very specific. You want to be clear, concise. I would list things in a very almost checklist oriented way with, with uh, respect to sections, modules, and expectations um, of the assignment overall. This can easily be done, as I said, in a Word document. In an in-person class, I would pull that Word document right up on the screen from Econestoga and walk through it with the students, giving examples, letting them ask questions. In an asynchronous course, I might actually do something similar where I have a screen capture video, much like I'm doing right here. And I'd have the Word document as well as a video to support them in reviewing that document with the expectations on it. I would also make sure in that in that same introduction to review any associated timelines or processes that the student is going to participate in as they uh, complete the assignment from start to finish. Sometimes assignments aren't going to have that, but oftentimes we almost have like expectations of completion or checkpoints, which can be very helpful in an asynchronous course having checkpoints with checklists through Econestoga can be really helpful to keep students on track. And I would argue that even in an in-person class, you bringing up checkpoints and checking in with students week by week um, is really, really helpful for them as well. Something that we often forget about when we're looking at assessment and assignment introduction is referring our students to how they're gonna be evaluated. So share the marking scheme or the rubric with your students. We can use these as a teaching tool in addition to their evaluation purpose. And this often gives students a real uh, sense of what you are expecting on top of the overall expectations. Many of our students have never seen a rubric or have never been evaluated with a rubric. And so it does warrant time and energy to be spent in the class explaining to them here are the levels that I'm going to assess you on. For this particular criteria, look at what I'm expecting if you want to get a 5 out of 5. Um, here's what I'm looking for for a, a minimal pass, right? And helping them understand what the descriptions for each level are, providing examples, etc. Really, really important. We also want to make sure that this rubric is available to our students at the outset. So when they start to be introduced to that assessment, they have that rubric and it needs to be available to them from that point forward to the point of um, the deadline. It's also great. I like to share tips and tricks with my students for those that have um, had courses run in past. You've seen students maybe struggle with a particular type of uh, or component to the assignment or you've had students uh, benefit from doing something kind of cool or unique. Why not share those ideas or those challenges or things to avoid with your students? Um, you want them to have a positive experience. And so if you know there are potential stumbling blocks, share that ahead of time. Give them ideas of how they can navigate around that and really support them in the process of assignment completion. We talk a lot about providing exemplars to students and there's some great literature to suggest that providing an exemplar or exemplars um, is really helpful at helping students be self-regulated in their learning. Um, it provides them a checkpoint, a, a bouncing off, um, an idea of what a certain type of work is going to get in terms of points. 
we might recommend that you give some exemplars, not just for the best of the best, but also, uh, and probably more effective, what does a B plus look like in terms of an exemplar? It helps the students see where they might aim or where they might shoot above. There's some assignments that that might not be helpful for. We don't want students copying from an exemplar or being boxed in in terms of creativity by trying to replicate or recreate an exemplar. So be cautious in, in what you provide. If you are going to share previous students' work as, as benchmarks for your current students, make sure that you've redacted all previous student information from that assignment and that you have expressed permission from the original student for the use of their work in this context. What else you want to do in this introduction is to allow plenty of time and space for questions. And that doesn't mean only opening up questions in the time when you are running a video or introducing this in class, but it means sharing the space in Econostoga for a Q&A forum, bringing questions back to the group that might have been asked of you by students independently. And so as you then progress from this initial introduction, you're going to revisit the questions, the commonly asked questions, and many, if not all of these other points to remind students as your content progresses, you might remind them that, hey, you know, in week four, we're talking about this, that could be really helpful to you with this particular assignment. Make sure that the conversation doesn't stop once you've introduced the particular assessment. And finally, as you get closer to that due date, we really want to make sure that there's a final check-in, that you're, you've reiterated expectations around submission, how they submit, where they submit, file types, etc., your expectations related to extension requests really important that those are conversations that are being had in the weeks leading up to that due date. So that's where I will leave you. In a nutshell, for assignments, you want to be thinking about this kind of timeline. You're going to nuance this process and this, um, this timeline for the type of assessments that you have in your course, for the weighting or the amount of work involved for students with the assignment, but keeping these really key pieces in mind is going to make sure that your students have a great understanding of what they're expected to do and how they can do it really well, which is all that we want is for our students to show and demonstrate their learning in a really successful and positive way. We would love to hear from you if you want further supports. Teaching and learning is um, here to support in all different areas of your teaching journey especially related to assignments, please reach out to us through, from our email. You can also visit our faculty learning hub. If you're reading this video or watching this video rather, uh, you found the faculty learning hub and I'm gonna post a couple of links below this video of other resources that we've created that would be helpful to you related to this um, with respect to helping students understand assessments. I wish you all the very best in your first semester here at the college, and I hope to see you again soon.